Hello there, and you are welcome once again to the light of life. My name is Joseph Bimbo Akinjogun. Today we'll be concluding our series, The Gift, the Grace, and the Glory. In the previous episode, we have spoken about the gift, we've spoken about the grace, and today we'll be concluding it by talking about the glory. And by glory, I'm referring to the glory of God. Because if you remember when we we're talking about the seven manifestations of grace, we mentioned glory. And that is the glory that God gives to men to enable them to fulfill his purpose for their lives. But what we are looking at today is the glory that men return to God for the acts that they see in the life of his servants. And it is important that we learn how to do that because God expects it from us. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word that we're about to receive today. Thank you for your truth that transforms and illuminates our hearts. Speak to us, O God, yet again. Let your word come with clarity and put us in the place that you have ordained that we should be. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, which is actually the passage of scripture that we started this series with, Jesus Christ speaking says, Let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We said in the previous episode that God expects us to produce good works. He said, Let your light so shine that men may see your good works. And He expects those good works to be obvious to men. It should be something that men would see because there is no way you can serve God without serving men. The way you serve God is by serving mankind. So that is why it says, let your light so shine that men may see it. If men are not receiving of you, then you are not doing the will of God. So that is extremely important that we note that. Let me just, that's just um, a message, short message from what we had done in times past. But when it comes to good works, we said that good works are works done by the supply of the grace of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8 says, And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work. The target is the good work, the raw material, the resource required, the capital asset, for producing that good work is actually the grace of God. And therefore, the more of it you have, then the more good works you are able to do. That's why it says he's able to make all grace abound towards you. That you, because of that grace that you have, having always all sufficiency in all things, and then you are able to abound unto every word. That means you have all the supplies that you require to do the good work that you have been called to do. So, but in doing the good works, what God wants from us is that when people receive these good works, they do not stop at us. They are able to trace it back to the source of the grace, the raw material, where it actually comes from. They are able to pinpoint that this is only a work that God can do. And as a result of that, they glorify him. That is why there is no assignment that God places upon the life of any man that that man is capable of accomplishing on his own. He has to come to a place where he leans on the grace of God and then that grace of God is now deployed in up to operation in his life so that he can accomplish the good work and then it will become unmistakable. It will become clear to everybody that the one that actually did this work is actually God. Imagine that somebody that is earning 100,000 naira per month suddenly builds a building that is worth 5 million and the person completes it in three months. It will be, it's clear that there's no way that person will be able to do that by virtue of what he is working for and earning. So in three months, we'll just be able to uh, get just 
300,000. But because he's able to do a 5 million project, then you begin to ask, how are you able to do this? The only reason why you are questioning his ability is because you see that what he's producing is beyond his capacity. That's exactly what God expects from us. For us to do good works such that men will see it and say, no, 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 this is beyond this man. This has to be God. And then they return all the glory to our God for that which he has done. And if you look at the earthly ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ, that was what it was all about. He would perform miracles and many times people would say, uh, how is it that this man is able to do these things? They were talking about, uh, the, the Pharisees were bothering one of the people that he healed. I think it was a man that was born blind in John chapter 9. And they were saying, give glory to God. Don't give glory to this man that the man is a sinner. And Jesus Christ said, whether the man is a sinner, I don't know. But I know, as that's the man speaking, sorry, said, whether the man is a sinner, I don't know. But what I know is that once I was blind, now I see. And that God does not answer the prayer of sinners. And those guys were angry. Because it was clear from that man's statement that the one that actually did that thing through that man was God. Many times the people would glorify God after Jesus Christ had performed the miracle because they know that those things that he did were things that no man on their own would be able to do. That it would take God for those things to be accomplished. And Jesus Christ was deliberate about that because he wants us to come to a place where we are able to see that even in our weaknesses, the grace of God can also be revealed in us as men to the point that we are able to bring glory unto his name. If he had come as an angel, all the things that he was doing wouldn't have been strange to people. It would have been believed that, of course, this is a spirit doing this or this is an angel doing this. But because he was 100% man, also he was 100% God, but he did those things as man. And therefore, we are able in our weaknesses to know that when the grace of God comes upon us as well, God can accomplish the same great feats through us. Acts 10, 38 says, How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, and he went about doing good, healing them that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. He emphasized it clearly that it was God that was with him. So the glory went to God and still goes to him. So that is what God wants us to do. The mindset that he wants us to have anytime we engage in any form of good works, bringing glory unto his name. There's always the temptation for us to draw attention to ourselves or to want to tell people how much effort that we made, how much connection we had for us to be able to accomplish the things that they are seeing. But this is what God is warning us about by the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ here. He says, let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. He didn't say that men may see your good works and stop there. He's saying that your mindset, your approach, your mentality should be that men must see this, but they must see that it is God that is the doer and he must be glorified. Hallelujah. So, glory must be given to God in everything that we do. There are two major kinds of rewards that are available to those who serve the purpose of God. We have the earthly reward, that's the physical reward, the, the, the one that is temporary. And then we have the eternal reward that is available for those who do that work. So when you do a good work, when you take the grace of God that is given unto you and you labor with it, then you can be sure that you will receive rewards here on earth and also in the life hereafter. But if you are doing that good work and you are not doing it for the glory of God, the best you will get will just be rewards here. If what you are seeking is the glory of men, as men glorifying you, 
Jesus Christ warned us about this in Matthew chapter 7 when he said that we should be very careful regarding the Pharisees who pray. They say long prayers because they just want people to see them praying. They go about secret places as in they, they'll, be, they'll be doing as if they are praying that their place is a secret place but they're actually in street corners where people can actually see them and they will not be praying there. So they will say, ah, this man is spiritual, this man is powerful. And then people will glorify them. They were doing those things for their attention. And Jesus Christ said, surely I say unto you, they have their reward. Why? Because all they would get would be just the earthly reward here. People acknowledging them and maybe giving them some form of recognition and gifts. But when it comes to eternal reward, they get big fat zero because they have not done it as unto the Lord. They have not done it for the purpose of glorifying God. So they are not qualified for any divine reward. Apostle Paul said that unto me, that's him now, who is less than the least of the saints is this grace given to preach the unsearchable riches of Christ. And he said that that grace that was given unto him, that he labored with it more than all those that were before him, said not him, but the grace that was given unto him. And therefore he did not frustrate the grace of God upon his life. So he said from those two statements that anything that he did, he was not deserving of it. That's what he means by he was less than the least of the saints. And that despite the fact that he was undeserving of it, those things that he did, he did with the grace that was made available unto him. That's why he said, not I, but even the grace that was given unto me. So even though he made efforts, he said he was not qualified to even make the efforts in the first place, and that the result that he has seen are not just because of his efforts, but because of the grace that was given unto him to even make the efforts in the first place. So, he now, because of that, gave all the glory to God. That's why he could boldly say, I have run the race. I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. Now is laid up for me a crown. Why is he talking about the crown, that eternal reward? It's because he did the work, everything that he did, for the glory of God. And that is what our mindset, our attitude should be. People must look at our lives and say that this thing that we are doing, it is to the glory of God. People must look at you and say, what you are seeking is that God will be glorified. That must be all about you. When even people come to you and they want to begin to, begin to praise you, they want to begin to um, appreciate you, which is okay, depending on the perspective that each person has, you have the responsibility to be telling them that it is not you, that it is God. And let it be loud in their hearing that it is not you. Because it is when you do that, that they can actually see how beneficial or, or how, let me say how possible it is for them to have this that same grace too. Apostle Paul says that the strength of God is made perfect in our weaknesses. That's what the Lord told him. My strength is made perfect in your weaknesses. So when you are able to acknowledge your own weakness, not that you are telling people that what you have is because you are smart, is because you are intelligent, is because you are connected, is because you are from social background, is because you have social kind of training. You went to Harvard, you went to Oxford, you went to Yale, you went to Princeton. No, let it be clear to people that it is actually God that is doing this thing through you, that it is not because of your effort. That's how you return the glory to Him. Let them see that there are many who have the same kind of opportunities that you had, who cannot produce the same kind of results that you are producing. So they will not make that mistake at any point in time. When they think of you, they will know that this can only be God. Bible speaking concerning the apostles. He says when they looked at them and they they saw that they were actually unlearned men, that they knew that these guys had been with Christ. 
because they knew that these things that they were doing <laughs> is not possible for them with the kind of exposure that they have. It's not possible for them to do it. The confidence which is Peter was speaking. No, no ignoramus will talk like that unless that person had encountered something. And that was why the people could admit that it was actually God that was behind the scene working in those people. So is that what you two are doing? I see on social media today, many prophets prophesying and you will see as the word of prophecy is coming, you'll be hearing things like, oh, general of the prophetic. You'll be hearing different kinds of people being healed. And they are there when they are healing them. And they say they are actually doing these things in the name of Jesus. Come on. You have to either glorify him or glorify yourself. You can not do the two together at the same time. It's not possible. So, the glory must always go to him at every point in time because he is the source of that grace that is enabling you to do that work. If he withdraws it, you are nothing. That's why David cried unto the Lord. He said, take not your Holy Spirit from me. Cast me not away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from him because he understood clearly that all those things that people were seeing in his life, it wasn't him, oh, that it was actually God that was working in him. So he did not toy with that. He didn't care. God, if you want to punish me for my sin, punish me. But don't take your presence away from me. Because I don't have any alternative to it. My skill cannot in any way measure up. My connections cannot. Saul did not know that. He thought he could just do it. He would just go to war as usual and fight and win. Not knowing that the one that was actually giving him the victory had departed from him. But he even knew. But he didn't care. He still continued going to war. Because he believed that he was doing it by his own effort. And eventually he found out but that's not how things happen. Hallelujah. So it's very important that we keep at the back of our minds that the glory must always go to God in everything that we do. How can we help men see the works and glorify God? Because according to that Ephesians chapter 5, sorry, Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, just where it says, let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Which means, there must be something they see in your good works that will cause them to give glory to God. It is not just the good works. If it's just about the good works, he would not say that they should glorify your Father. It means there must be certain things that must accompany, that must characterize that good work that you are doing that when they see it, they will give all the glory to God. And what are those things? The first is the love of God. When people see the love of God through the works that you are doing, they give the glory to Him. Because even the best of us, there's a limit to how much love we are willing to show others. That is an absolute fact. But Bible says that the love of God is spread abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. So when you are able to go beyond a particular kind of limit, the average human being, the average rational human being knows that this thing that you are doing is beyond what you on your own are able to do. So he knows that this can only be God. He knows that it can only be God working in you to do this because he himself knows that he does not have the capacity to do it. So let the love of God radiate in everything that you are doing. Let men see it. Let men see that what you are doing is because you are extending the love of God towards them. 
and the love of God is so abundant, it's so great, it overflows. The love of God is not emotional, it's not based on feelings. The love of God is deep, much deeper than we can ever imagine. The word is agape. He's not talking about storges or filios or eros. It is agape, unconditional love of God. Do you know that people going to hell, even on their way to the lake of fire, because they chose to go there, even as they are going there, even as they are there, he will still not stop loving them. Because it is his nature to love unconditionally. Look at the book of Job chapter 1. Look at the way God was speaking to Satan. Do you see anger in him? Do you see a man, as a, sorry, do you see a God that is angry when he was talking to Satan? No. You see the calmness. You see the peace. He wasn't rough. Why? Because he is love. That's who he is. So even in Satan's fallen nature, God still loves him. Just that the principle, the demands of justice must be met. That's why he has to go into the lake of fire. The place prepared for the rebellious. So the love of God must radiate in everything that you do. Let people feel it. And then when they see that love that is beyond what you yourself can give, then they return all the glory to God. People love for different reasons. They love because they want to get something from you. They love because they want you to do something for them. But God loves unconditionally. That's why he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. So let the love of God flow through you to men. The next thing is the wisdom of God. When Joseph was about to interpret the dream of Pharaoh, he said it clearly. He said, God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. He stated it very clearly that it is not him that will do it. That it is God that will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. That was why when Pharaoh was going to respond to him after he finished the interpretation of the dream, Pharaoh said, where can we find a man in whom is the spirit of the God? He understood that, yes, this was a man that did this, but it must be the spirit of God inside of him that accomplished this because the man on his own cannot do it. That is what it means to bring glory unto God. So when you display the wisdom of God, when you are willing to go beyond your intellect, when you are willing to go beyond your reasoning and function in the wisdom of God, then you are bringing your pl- yourself into a place where people can glorify God. Not that people will look at you and say, ah, he's able to do that because he uh, is called at uh, University of Benin. Oh, he's able to do that because uh, he graduated with the first class from Unilag. That's why he's able to do that. No. Let people see that the wisdom coming out of you is the wisdom of God. And that wisdom of God is able to transform their lives. They see it and they too will desire it. Praise the name of the Lord. The third thing that would enable people to glorify God when they see your good works is the holiness of God, the character of God that they see in the things that you are doing. If you are doing a good work, in quote, but your attitude, your character does not portray God, people will not see God and there will be no way they will glorify God with it. Take for instance, you steal public funds or you are falsifying figures in your company 
and then the money you are getting from them you are not donating it in church or giving it to charity then the people know you're a politician they know what your salary should be they know what you should be earning in that position that you are occupying and they see that you are living life at a level that is higher than that which you are getting and they know what you are doing how can that translate to the glory of God even if you say you are digging boreholes everywhere you want to do a charitable deed for some people but you are doing it for them so that you can gain acceptance they know it's just for political reasons that is not bringing glory to God and God doesn't want that do good works for the purpose of bringing glory to God and that must show in your personality in your character your holiness the purity in your conscience in the things that you are doing not that you are trying to manipulate people that must be the attitude with which you do the service of God or I can assure you the glory is not going to go to God and therefore there is no divine reward for you let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven hallelujah the fourth thing that men will see in your good works is your faith in God your faith in God when you are willing to stand and trust God in a difficult situation and people see how you pulled through it's very easy for them to trust God in your life as well because the glory will be going to God because they will see that it's God that actually did this for you but if all the efforts you are making you are just mentioning God by name but you are manipulating things you are doing it your own way it is not going to translate to the glory of God and when it does not translate to the glory of God you cannot get divine reward for it so you must be steadfast whether it is convenient or not you must stand in the counsel of God that is how you ensure that the glory goes to God because when people see that he's the one that you are waiting on and that eventually came through for you because they see you they see the things that you are doing and when people see that and that God came through for you they too will be able to trust God because they will know that that same God will come through for them as well they know that you don't have the monopoly of God so they too go to God and they get the same results as well so you must learn to do that and lastly you must follow God are you following him are you following his dictate are you doing the good work the way he tells you to do them or you are just doing these things on the basis of emotions are you adhering strictly to what he tells you to do or you are just doing it only when it is convenient for you if you are just doing the one that is convenient people will not glorify God but if you follow the instructions of God even when it is not convenient for you people will see that it is God that is enabling you to do this and they will glorify him note i told you what God wants is that all the glory comes back to him we do the good works he wants to be seen he wants us to project him and when we project him he now in turn blesses us with divine rewards so i'm asking you today are you doing what you are doing for the purpose of glorifying god or you are just seeking your own glory that's what we are rounding this session with as you discover yourself as a gift to your generation and you encounter the grace of god in increasing measures in your life know that god is looking at your life 
and hoping that the glory will come unto him. I pray that you will not become an unprofitable servant, a fruitless tree, a failed investment, but that what God would see when he looks at your life is not the good works that you are doing alone, but the glory that is coming to him from it. Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about doing good, healing them with the oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. That verse began with God and it ended with God. I hope that will be the story of your life when men choose to write it. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word that has come today to transform our hearts. We ask, O oh God, that in any way that we may be acting contrary to your plan, drawing glory unto ourselves, that you help us to repent today and to focus all the attention on bringing glory to you and you alone. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you and see you in the next episode.